Um, but today we have Patricia Simpson from the Director of Chemical Sciences Career Services talking to you about leadership and how to use your strengths um, to work as a team and um, to lead. So I'm uh, going to pass it off to Patricia. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, so first of all, those of you who did take the Clifton Strengths Assessment or who have in the past, I just wanted to give a shout out to the Illinois Leadership Center. I'm not with them, but they are the ones who provided um, the assessment for you for students for free. For those of you who have not taken the Clifton Strengths, you, you can still certainly come today, but if this is something that you find you'd like to learn more about, you can actually work through the Illinois Leadership Center in a lot of different ways to be able to take the Clifton Strengths Assessment. And many classes will offer it, as part of the class, uh, definitely some of the leadership classes and so forth. There are also several I programs, leadership programs that the Illinois Leadership Center will offer, and one of those does center around the center strength. So there are several other ways. If you're interested, there is some contact information for the Leadership Center at the end of the presentation. But to get started, I just want to talk a little bit about leadership in general and why the strengths approach to leadership really matters. So. Leaders are not just those people that you see leading the companies that you are um, working at this summer or um, serving as your bosses. Leaders are really anybody who can collaborate to bring about positive change. So it's not just, I have this position and so I'm a leader. So potentially, anybody can be a leader at any point as long as they're working with other people to have an impact on their community, their world, whatever the case might be. Leaders definitely are anybody who's interested in making that contribution, connecting with other people to have some kind of an impact. And leadership development begins with you understanding who you are. And that is certainly your strengths, that's a piece of that, uh, but also what motivates you. What are your passions? Where is your, like, this is what gets me up in the morning. What motivates you to um, do what you do? And of course, certainly your, your actual skills, things that you're good at but also things that are important to you, so your values. And from a career services perspective, that's I think one of the things that a lot of students don't think about when they're trying to decide on a job. They look at some of the intrinsic benefits or what the actual job is, but I think it's really important, especially if you've got a couple of offers that you're trying to decide between, to look at what your values are, what's important to you, because that's where the thing is gonna drive you in the long run. So knowing what those values are really is the first step, and a lot of us don't. A lot of us have never sat down and made a list and said, these are the things that I really value that are important to me. So I would challenge you to do that at some point before you graduate. Um, the other thing that is important in leadership is that leaders need to recognize and value the people that are around them, the people that they oversee, but also the people that they collaborate with. Because everybody has a different voice and a different perspective. Everybody can bring in different strengths and skills and so forth. And so being able to value that from the people that are around you is really crucial if you're going to be a good leader. Now certainly we all know leaders who don't value the people that they work with, but to be a good leader, you really must. <clears throat> all right, so um, things that you can do using the, the strengths theory, and for those of you who actually did take the clip or has either for today or in the past taken the clip and strengths, Okay, good, scattered kind of throughout, perfect. Um, so utilizing your strengths can help you do a lot of things. Certainly, being a good leader is part of that. Um, but I think it also can improve your ability to be a better student, to be a better employee, to be a better team player. Um, it can help you figure out how to study smarter. I have a couple of handouts up here, not enough for everybody, but for those of you who've actually taken the Clifton Strengths, that takes your different strengths and shows you how you should study based on that strength. So if you're interested in those, come up and see me afterwards. Uh, of course, because I do career services, I think the nice thing about Clifton Strengths is it can also help you find a better fit career. Now, in truth, whatever strengths you have do not mean that that is the career to follow. In fact, Gallup, who is the organization that put on the, or put together the Clifton Strengths Assessment, and has done all the research, they have even said um, that you can do any job with any strengths if you figure out what those strengths are. In fact, they wrote a book on leadership where they talked to five different CEOs of very different companies, all big Fortune 100 companies, all very different strengths, but they were all great CEOs. So your strengths don't necessarily drive the job title, but they can help you find a fit 
that lines, aligns well with what your strengths already are. And then, of course, teamwork, as Jenny mentioned, we'll talk about. All right, so a couple of quick questions, um, just for you to kind of take some, a few seconds to kind of ponder and think about. Um, if you even want to jot some notes, if you've got a notebook or something with you. Um, but how would you generally describe yourself? And I don't mean as a computer science major or as an accountant. I mean who you are, what's important to you, how do you describe yourself? Um, what would your friends and family say about you if they were going to describe you in general? I would also encourage you to think about the talents that you do have and how you employ those in order to be successful. Probably some of you have talents that you're not really using. I would encourage you, especially after today, because that's kind of the whole premise of what we're talking about, to really implement those things, to work on those. You know, the first time you hopped on a bicycle, you could probably sort of ride, or maybe you didn't, maybe you crashed. Uh, but the more you practice, the more you hone that ability, just like with any skill. And the truth is, even when you have strengths in a certain area, you still have to work on those. You still have to develop those. If you don't, they're always just going to be a, yeah, this kind of comes naturally. Even the best athletes, for example, that just have that natural gift, if they want to be amazing, they still have to practice. Or musicians, same thing. They have to practice and hone their craft so that when they go out on the court, they're ready to go and they are full-fledged, full power. Um, or on the stage, whatever the case might be. So how do you use your talents that you already have in order to be who you are, as you described in that number one. And then one way to kind of figure out what your talents might be is what is easy for you to learn, what kind of flows. And we'll talk about flow in a little bit here in a couple slides. Um, but those are good indicators that this is an area that, um, and, and by learning, I don't necessarily mean like a computer program or a specific technical skill, but you know, do your friends tell you, wow, you're really great at listening to my problems? or um, you tend to really have a knack just for learning in general, for reading and pulling in information quickly. So that probably would be a good indicator of one of your strengths. Clifton, um, Donald Clifton was the father of the Clifton Strengths Assessment, as the name implies. Um, but he was a, a strengths theorist, and basically what his thought was is why don't we work on what's already great with people to make it awesome? instead of focusing so much time on what's wrong with people to make it an eh, average mediocre. Now certainly if you've got, I don't know, a weakness that you need to do in order to do the job that you're in or to live the life that you want to live, you have to work on it so that it's passable. But the strengths theory is that if you spend tons of time working on those things that are weakness areas, you're never going to get them to be awesome. You're only going to get them to be passable. Whereas if you find the areas where you already have some natural gifting and really work on those, it, you're going to really just be able to soar. So it's kind of like the parent who, and I apologize for those of you who heard me earlier this week, but it's, or last week, but it's kind of like the parent who um, you bring home that report card and you've got all A's and one B minus, and they focus on that B minus and don't even ask like or congratulate you on the A's, but what happened here? What happened here? That's weakness fixing. That's focusing on the weaknesses as opposed to saying, wow, you're really gifted in all of these STEM fields, so maybe this is an area that we see and, and maybe PE wasn't as strong for you. That's okay. Let's focus on the STEM fields because you're obviously doing really well here. So that's the strength approach as opposed to weakness approach. <clears throat> um, the Gallup organization, in order to come up with the strengths assessment, there really is data behind this, so it's not just like they came up with this, you know, Roofroo thing, but they actually docked to over 2 million people over a course of 30 years as they were developing this. Um, and they found that what makes these leaders, um, first of all, satisfied, second of all, successful, and then third, productive, were these things that they then kind of called strengths. So that's where the premise for all of this came from. Um, it measures your natural tendencies, as I said, that Clifton Strengths does. And then you get five signature themes. So those of you who have already taken it, you probably know what your top five are. Those of you who have not taken it, on your chairs, although I think we missed a few in the back, but there is a sheet that lists all of the themes. So you can kind of read through that as you go and sort of guess at what some of yours might be. And then, like I said, I hope that will encourage you to then come in and actually do more with that. So the, new, the really cool thing I think about the Clifton Strengths is that we're really unique and we're really creative 
specifically. Like everybody's so individual. Um, in fact, the, fa the chance of you having the same top five as anybody else is one in 278,000, and that's in any order. So most likely, even if you all had taken the Clifton Strengths in this room, none of you are going to share the same top five. Maybe a few, but not all five. Having the same top five in the same order, the chance of that is one in 33 million people, which is crazy. So, I mean, I think that that really is a testimony to if you can tap into what your strengths are, you're going to be able to be the best you ever possible. Like, nobody else can be who you are and, and if you're really living up to your full potential. The Clifton Strengths is not just an American thing. It's actually used by many people worldwide and has been translated into a number of different languages. So I think that's another thing that shows to the validity of this assessment. And colleges use it a lot. So there are some campuses around the country, in fact, that call themselves strengths campuses. And every student will take a click in strengths and they use it in all their programming. And so just kind of a fun little fact. All right, so what is strengths development? I've kind of alluded to it already, but basically it's taking this thing that you're good at, this natural gift or talent, and it's working on it. It's investing in that talent and really honing it um, so that way that you come up with an actual strength. So what you start off with, for those of you taking the Clifton Strengths, those five things are really just those talents. They're things that come naturally to you. You may or you may not have done the investment of time and working on it and, and really practicing, really, that skill in order to make it be a strength. Hopefully you have, and if you haven't, hopefully this will challenge you to do so. All right, so um, top achievers, people who are great at whatever it is that they're doing, spend most of their time doing that through their strengths. Um, they have learned, if there's an area that maybe they're not as strong in, to delegate that. Now, certainly, there are some things that you can't just say, well, I'm not good at, I'm not good at proofreading, and so I'm not going to proofread anything for my job. Somebody else can do it. If you have to proofread, you have to proofread. So it's not an excuse to be able to get out of those jobs that you don't, or the duties you don't really like doing. Uh, but to be a really strong, good leader, if you know and you recognize there's an area that you're not as strong in, finding somebody to come alongside you and your team to take that over is a great way. Another way, great way is you can um, find ways that you have, with a strength that you do have to capitalize on that to sort of solve that problem. So an example that I used to like to give a lot is if you have woo, if you um, have the strength of winning others over, you can walk into a room like this or much bigger and have no problem talking to people, interacting with people. In fact, you kind of get a high off of it. Most people, however, don't have woo in their top fives. So maybe you have another strength. Um, a lot of times people will have context. Context is the ability to look at the history. Um, so you use that context to engage with people. You go into the saying, I'm not going to try and win over this whole entire room of 500 people. I'm going to find five that I can learn something about their history. And because I have the context strength, I'm going to be interested in learning about their history. And of course, people love to talk about themselves. So if you can get them talking about themselves, then you've won that person over. So you win others over, but using a different strength. So capitalizing on a strength that you do have to do something that maybe isn't in your sort of easy, natural gifting. And then those uh, people who are really top achievers are using their strengths to overcome obstacles. So you've got something in front of you, maybe it's a skill that you don't have. So you're going to use that um, relationship building skill. You have to, to build a relationship connectedness or something like that to pull somebody in to help you with that and to overcome that obstacle. All right, so take a minute um, to think about what you learn easily, what you sort of um, just almost you, when you're learning it or doing it, you maybe even lose track of time. That's a good indicator of what your flow is, where your strengths might lie. Um, and another thing that you can do is to consider somebody else who is really strong and really excels at what they do, and that can help you see what is important to you. So think about at your best, um, think about somebody who you admire as a leader, maybe they're really great at what they do. Um, and, and think for a second or two, a minute or two, whatever, um, about what sort of strengths or gifts that that person has that leads him or her to be successful. And that's 
somebody in mind? Think about how now your talents or your strengths match or maybe differ from that person. Anybody have a good example? Person you can think of and maybe how you line up with them or don't line up with them? Anybody else feel like sharing? All right, we'll keep moving on. <clears throat> I think it's good to look at other people um, and then compare that back to yourself. So this person's a leader, um, how do I match up? Because that's a good way to be able to, to emulate people. And also to look for mentors. Peter Drucker actually did a lot of leadership and management theory, and I really love this quote by him because I think it really epitomizes what the whole concept of strength theory is about. And basically what he says is it takes way less effort to find where you already have that sweet spot, where you already have some strengths, and practice and spend some time investing in that. Really make it amazing. It takes less effort to do that than it does to pull something up all the way from the bottom where maybe it's just, you know, you just scrape by. You might get it up to average if you're really lucky. Now, certainly there's a difference between something you've just never done before. Um, but when we're talking about actual weaknesses, so something that you really aren't good at doing, it's going to take a lot more effort to pull that, that thing up to make it average than it is to take something that's already a talent or a strength, work on it a little bit to make it awesome. So this is the place where good leaders really are typically hanging out, using their strengths, working on them to make them awesome. All right, so we're gonna do a little activity. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I would encourage those of you who did take the Clifton Strengths to kind of think about what your strengths were. For those of you who did not, if you read through or skimmed through that sheet of paper and maybe picked out a couple of strengths, just kind of have those in the back of your mind so you can kind of think about what, what those are because the activity we're gonna do in a minute here We'll draw on this. Um, and if there's something that you, uh, for those of you who actually took the assessment uh, that surprised you, I would encourage you to think about that too. And then for everybody, which of your themes, whether Clifton assessment says this is your top theme or you yourself think it's your top theme by scanning through that sheet, um, which of the ones do you think is the top one for you? And have that in the back of your mind as we do this activity. So. Um, individually, you've got a plane crash activity kind of there on your, sh on your chairs. Uh, individually, go through and rank those items in order of what you think is going to be the most helpful if you were to be in this situation. All right, go ahead and break up into small groups of like three to four and do that next column. As a group, you have to rank um, what of these things are the most essential. So thinking about your strengths, and then going through those and um, you know, working together as a team to figure out rank order what's most essential. So groups of three or four. You'll have about ten, ten minutes. All right. Not quite ten minutes, but I, it looks like a few groups are done, so I'm going to wrap it up. Does anybody think they've got the right answer? <laughs> anybody survivalist trainer trainer? No? All right. So, <clears throat> probably no. Technically, there's no right answer, but um, there was a, an army ranger who kind of came up with this activity, and so he did go through um, based on his survivalist training and came up with the order of this. So, I will start with the bottom, the least important, and go up to the top and let you know. And then we'll talk about how the, the team kind of talk, talk through your things. So, number 12, the very least important thing is the sectional air map made of plastic. Why do you think that is? 
Because if you enter out to the nearest outlet point, you might be free to go Yeah, it actually, they say it's bad because it might encourage people to go to the nearest town. And it's 20 miles away, you're going to freeze. Um, so it's better to just not even have a map, to not know where you are, to not have that, like, I'm going to go. So with that in mind, what do you think is number 11? Yeah, exactly, the compass, get rid of those things. We don't want any temptations to go out in the middle of the coldness. Um, and I, I know some of you may disagree with number 10, um, but what do you think is next most? Yeah, the whiskey. Yeah, I kind of led that up to it, didn't I? Yeah, the whiskey, I mean, sure, in theory, you could use the whiskey to um, clean a wound or something like that, but there's no indication in the directions that you have a wound. And again, whiskey may be a temptation that, well, if I drink this, I'm going to warm up. When in truth, we all know that that's not what happens. So, um, number nine is a loaded 45 caliber pistol. Um, the main reason that it would be helpful would be as a sound signaling device. Like if somebody were to come as, you know, whatever, and you need to be able to get in touch with somebody. They say a lot of people who are actually frozen to death um, do so because they're too weak when help finally comes to be able to signal. Uh, so if you had a pistol, it could be helpful, but most likely it's not going to really be anything useful. Uh, newspapers, redeeming value would come next. Um, they can help you start the fire, but not other than that super helpful. I guess potentially you could use it as insulation underneath your clothes. Um, Number seven, they said, was family-sized chocolate bars. Most of the time, you're going to be rescued. Most of the time, you're going to be rescued pretty short, pretty quickly. So, 24 to 48 hours. So, your immediate needs are to be able to have shelter so that you don't die of hypothermia. So, chocolate, while it's great, doesn't really help with that. Um, axe is the next. Again, you can use it for chopping things down, but um, maybe getting some kindling for fire. Most of the time, though, the fire that you're going to need is going to be dry, so you won't really even need an axe for that. So we get into now sort of the things that are more useful. Um, number five is the 20 by 20 piece of canvas because it can help with shelter and um, to some extent protection from the cold. Number four is that can of Crisco. Um, you can use it for a lot of different things. Certainly melting down Crisco oil could be used as uh, helping you keep your fire going. You can use the can itself to melt snow. Um, the main thing when you are out in the middle of the winter, woods, whatever, um, if you try to eat cold snow, it's going to put shock to your body, especially in those types of situations. So if you can put snow in a can, warm up the can, melt the water. All right. Uh, number three, extra clothing. Number two, a ball of steel wool. To, that certainly is something to help as a fire starter. And then number one, which kind of honestly surprised me and maybe some of you as well, is the cigarette lighter because it says without fluid. Uh, but the main reason the cigarette lighter can still be helpful is uh, it'll still help create a spark even if there's no, no oil in it to keep it going. So if you use the steel wool, create a spark, and then you have fire, which is the primary concern. Anybody come pretty close to that? Order? Yeah? Good. Okay, so your team works through it, or you as individuals? Okay. So what do you think about your group dynamics helped you come up with some pretty good answers? You're just all really smart. Okay. What's that? Oh. All right. Uh, anybody else kind of come close? Tell me about your conversations with your team dynamics. How did that? Did you see anything that maybe somebody was overpowering the group or not not contributing or anything like that that you thought was interesting? You probably don't want to tell on each other either. I didn't, you know. Don't play me. So I think in an activity like this or any others where you're trying to work as part of a team, sometimes things really do come out. And it's important to have that strong leadership style to, to recognize and value other voices, but also to know what your own strengths are. And so that's why we kind of just do this as a little bit of a team building um, interaction activity. Uh, <clears throat> so let's talk about teams real quickly here. So on the back of your sheet, you've got a grid that lists four different domains. 
Now, unless you can go out and make everybody you know take the lift and strings, it's going to be a little bit challenging to actually figure out where somebody falls on that. Um, however, it's a lot easier to figure out where they might fall on the quadrants. So these quadrants here, whoops, these quadrants here are the two exterior are focusing more on project based, and the two interior are focusing more on people based. So obviously, if you have a team, it really helps to have people who have strengths across the board. You don't want everybody on your team to have executing strengths because you're all going to get stuff done, but nobody's going to be there to strategize or to plan. Um, also, nobody's going to be there to value the contributions of the other team members. So it's important when you're putting together teams as a, as a leader that you're pulling on people who have strengths in each one of these different quadrant areas. So I would encourage you as you're thinking about teams that maybe aren't working to see if this could be one of the issues. Um, you know, if you're not growing as a group or you're not being able to do any strategic thinking, then maybe you're missing the influencing quadrant or you're missing the strategic thinking quadrant as your team. So can you pull in people who have those skills in those areas to help you build? It's something that's really important to think about. So in general, kind of a fly through, the, ex the executing, of course, as you can imagine, they're the ones who get things done. Uh, the people who are the influencers are just that. They're pulling people together. If you're trying to do a startup business and you don't have anybody who's got the influencing skills on your team, you're not going to get any money, probably. So uh, it's important to have people from all four of these quadrants. Uh, the relationship building team. Those are people that can build the community, that can pull the team together to make sure that everybody's strengths are being leveraged. And then finally, the people who um, do that strategic thinking, that planning, that visioning are also really crucial. A couple of final things about teams and thinking about putting that together. Every team is going to have conflict at some point, and that's okay. I think what's important is how you work through that conflict and knowing that it's inevitable, but if you can work through it, you're going to have a much stronger team. Strong teams are going to be able to prioritize the values of what's crucial and be able to move through that. So that's why conflict isn't going to destroy a team. Uh, members of strong teams are as committed both to their personal goals as they are to their group goals. Um, and, and work and play, I think both are balanced and important. Strong teams definitely have diversity, not just from those four different quadrants that I showed you, but diversity of ideas and thoughts and backgrounds and so, so much more. Um, and then finally, if you have a strong team, no matter what, as a leader, you're going to be a magnet for more strong talent. So that's kind of the final takeaway for today, is just to keep in mind that team building does take work, and you have to have a little bit of each sort of leadership area. If you've got a strong team um, and you have a strong leader, you're going to be able to get a lot more accomplished, obviously. So. Uh, think about a little bit what you're going to do. Uh, for those of you who have taken the Clifton strengths, moving forward, how can you work on those strengths that you have? How can you implement them? What strategically and intentionally can you do to use your strengths to develop your strengths? If you haven't yet taken the Clifton strengths, either use that handout that I gave you with all of them listed or talk to the Leadership Center uh, with their contact information up there about doing so and learning a little bit more. All students are able to take the Clifton strengths through the Illinois Leadership Center for free. And I think it's a great tool to help you learn more about yourself and your ability to be a good leader. So good luck to you all. Enjoy the rest of your summers. And for those of you who have taken the Clifton strengths, as I said, I've got some academic handouts up here if you'd like to get them. And more food, Jenny, is that cool? All right. Thanks for coming, everybody.